Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. It's a little spicy. It had a fun little twist. I really liked this one. So if you want to try it on your own first, go ahead, pause the video. I'm going to give you a hint. You need to do U substitution first. Okay, so I'm going to think of x to the fourth in the denominator as x squared squared, as we often do. And I'm going to try to go ahead and let u equal x squared. And then when I find du, I notice it's 2x dx. And currently, I'm out of luck because all I have up top is dx. I wish there was an x with it. So I'm just going to clean up a bit more. 1 half du is x dx. And my motto that I tell my students is, when you wish something is the case in a problem, make it happen. Don't sit around feeling sorry for yourself. So I go, oh, I really wish that there was an x up top. So I'm going to make it happen like so. But you have to do it in a legal way, right? You can't just go willy-nilly adding x's in different places. So what I'm going to do is add that x in the top I so badly want, but I'm also going to multiply by x in the denominator. That way I'm just really multiplying by 1. I'm not doing anything illegal. Okay, let me clean up then a wee bit more before we do the u sub. I'm going to have x dx upstairs. And then I can combine those two little x's here and write x squared, x to the fourth, plus 1. And now I'm ready to do my u sub. It's going to work out beautifully. So this x dx right here is 1 half du. And you know how I love to pull the constants outside, so let's do that. 1 half du now in the numerator. And then this x squared is u. Wow, that worked out well. And then x to the fourth, that's u squared plus 1. So now let's take a look at what we've done. Things look good. I can do partial fraction decomposition now. I could not earlier with that x to the fourth situation, right? No, no, no. But if I have just an irreducible quadratic, we got it. So let's bust out some partial fractions. So the integrand is 1 over, I'm going to leave the 1 half outside, okay? We don't need it. u times u squared plus 1. I'm going to have a over u plus... Since u squared plus 1 is an irreducible quadratic, I need bu plus c upstairs. And then in the next step, you multiply through by the LCD, which is u, u squared plus 1. And then I'm going to be left with 1 equals a times u squared plus 1 plus bu plus c times u. Distribute, distribute, you're a little hard out. So 1 equals au squared plus a plus bu squared plus cu. And then now you're going to solve for a, b, and c by equating the coefficients for like terms on both sides of the equation. So what do I mean? Do you see any u squareds on the left-hand side? No. Do you see u squared on the right? Yes. That means 0 has to equal a plus b, the coefficients of u squared on the right. Do you see any u to the first on the left? No. Do you have u to the first on the right? Yes, I have c times u. So z 0 is c. And then any constants on the left? Yes, we have 1. Any constants on the right? Yes, just a. That's a constant. So a is 1, c is 0. And then from here I can see, okay, if a is 1, then b has to be negative 1. So now I have the partial fraction decomposition. I can rewrite my integral as, remember, we had that 1 half outside. a over u is 1 over u plus bu plus c. So that would be negative u plus 0 over u squared plus 1 du. Okay, we can rewrite this now. This is 1 half integral, 1 over u minus u over u squared plus 1 du. Very good. Now, from here, we're pretty much home free. Keep that 1 half. Antiderivative of 1 over u is going to be natural log absolute value of u minus. Now, depending where you are in your calculus career, you may or may not be able to do this antiderivative in your head. If you're pretty far through Calc 2, you should be good. If you're just starting off, then no. 
So you do need to make another substitution. We already used up u, so I would recommend doing another variable like t, and you would do it off to the side because you're breaking it up into two integrals. You're not doing a substitution for this term. At this point though, I'm totally fine. If my students are comfortable, if they were to let t be u squared plus one, dt would be 2u du. So you all you're doing is picking up a one half and you're gonna have ln absolute value of the denominator. If that just traumatized you, the fact that I said that, then do the substitution off to the side. So you should end up with one, one half ln absolute value u squared plus one, like this, plus c. Okay, I'll leave you to verify that if this is not obvious, okay? Good, now go back. Remember, originally in the problem, u was equal to x squared. So let's sub that all back in. One half natural log. Now x squared isn't negative, so I don't need to put absolute value. I'm just gonna switch it to parentheses. Minus one half ln x squared squared would be x to the fourth plus one. Again, I don't need parentheses plus c. Okay, now you have a couple choices. You could just distribute the one half through from here, one half ln x squared minus one fourth ln x to the fourth plus one plus c. I would not have a problem if my students left their answer like this. That's fine with me. Um, the back of the book simplified further and I wanna explain what they did, okay? Don't move that two in the front because the problem is then you're going to switch back to natural log of x x could be negative since it's not squared anymore then you're going to have to reintroduce your absolute value bars so it's not ideal to do that but if you do want to combine them into a single logarithm okay what needs to happen is you need to have the same coefficient in the front so we can factor it out so how do i make the first term have a one fourth in the front. Okay, okay. You add another one half and a two, and this is still ln x squared minus one fourth ln x to the fourth plus one plus c. Okay, this is just one, right? I haven't done anything illegal. Now I'm gonna take this two, move it back up and make it the exponent on the argument there. So now this is squared again. And that's fine because it'll stay positive. So then we have over here 1 fourth natural log x squared squared is x to the fourth minus 1 fourth natural log x to the fourth plus 1 plus c. And then I can factor out the 1 fourth and then write natural log and I don't need absolute value bars because everything's positive x to the fourth over x to the fourth plus one plus c. And this is actually the answer that's in the back of the book. I don't know that I feel like that's crucial, okay? I'm more than happy if you can make it here, but just check with your professor. I hope this little trick made sense because if you looked in the back of the book and maybe you weren't the strongest with your log properties, which is very common, you might have thought you got it wrong if you saw this and you only made it up to here, but they're equivalent, they're equivalent. And I just wanted you to understand, we don't move this two in the front because then you would have to put absolute value back, which is not the end of the world, but then you couldn't combine them because if one has absolute value and one doesn't, eh. I mean, I guess you could, they just didn't want to. They just didn't want to. Okay, enough about that. Simplifying is difficult. So just always check with your teacher. That concludes the integral of the day. I digress. I got halfway through recording the solution of calculus three exam three but it's going to take some more time and i have to get going so i hope you enjoy this short little video today i'll have more for you later this week subscribe if you haven't already give the video a thumbs up leave me a comment down below how spicy was this integral or was it not spicy did the log part at the end give you a headache i think so I also have full video lectures for Calc 1, 2, 3 and stats and much more. And you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Math with Professor V. Love you all. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.